Yeah, right, right. Yeah, that's that's. that's but that's it's I feel about wedding it, yeah. day. I have been upset several times. Day, every day is a good day. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, now <laughs> we're all set. Yeah, today today is a, a great day. So, how how is today great for you? Today is great for you. Say that again. Oh, how is today great for you? Today is great for me because I decided that it's a great day, that every day is a it. great day yeah. and that I am creating. So yeah. I don't stop creating. I'm still creating. And at, after the podcast, I am going out to create something. So Ooh, good. it's quite, taking action. Quite, quite exciting. Yeah. Taking action. That's, I love mm-hmm. it. Did you know today is 11-11? 11-11. 22. So one, well, one, 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 two, two. One plus one equals two. <laughs> one plus one equals plus two. And plus one equals three. Four plus two equals six plus two equals eight. So it all adds up to eight, which is infinity on its side. Hmm. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Wow. So if you want to put, put all that metaphysical numerical significance in it it's a super day of manifestation i heard that so what do you mean what do you hear by manifestation i heard something interesting earlier (laughs) that people say what was it i heard something it was like manifesting is people seeing that manifesting is wanting things but it says you know manifesting things so that you will have things yeah but the person was saying i think it was jim roar he was saying that manifesting was more being something and reflecting it and when you are i love that yeah it it attracts things that are are alike attracts yes so it's not so it's it's not not it's not that you're creating something from the x or something from outside of you is coming it's it's because of who you are being who you are the reflection of you yeah, so, so manifestation is a reflection of, of who you're being. Of who you are, because yes, what you are yeah. attracts, you know, things that are alike attracts. And yeah. so it's energy. So that, and that was interesting for me. That's the first time that I hear it this way, because I've been hearing a lot about manifesting in terms of acquiring, manifesting yeah, right. something to receive right. something, but it's more uh, reflecting who you are and that will attract um, its equivalent. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, the the thing I would say though about the numbers is the, the numbers are arbitrary. You know, the, the year is arbitrary, the day is arbitrary, but we can make every day a, a super day of yeah, every day for me. Right? Every day is a blessing. Like every day, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I am thankful for another day where I got to breathe to do yeah. things. So yeah. I'm grateful for the yeah. day. Yeah. And yeah, I I mean I wouldn't create less one day and create more the other day just because of the dates you know or the uh, just just because the date is is telling you something that determines what's going to yeah. that that you that was with my with my old girlfriend she was very into astrology which mm-hmm. is very what's what's the word deterministic I, I i use that word it's like well that's who you are because it was written in the stars and the way the stars were aligned and you know that's just yeah i, I don't know if i, I laugh that. because when i was young when i was a teenager um in the in the newsletter the news the news magazine like the news the journal oh. the journal mm-hmm. how do you say yeah the paper journal yeah. um, the newspaper the newspaper thank yeah. you on the newspaper we had at in senegal le soleil that we would read every day there was a uh, every day everybody will ask like when we were driving in the car to go to school when my dad were driving us we would all ask about our um horoscope oh, horoscope yeah yeah horoscope yes. yeah and i'm a libra <laughs> so i would listen and they'll be like okay today will be like this kind of day and you will have this and i'll be super happy and then you know uh, everybody will ask you know what and we will listen to it like it was going to happen yeah and, yeah yeah but i don't believe in astrology i should I, probably I maybe i don't know it but um I, I i sort of i i did i respected it as a frame as a framework mm-hmm. but I, I this this deterministic thing about well you are who you are because of the very moment in time that you were born i, mm-hmm. I don't know 
you are who I you think, are because that's who you, I mean, you're part yeah. of the universe no matter when you were born. Yeah, I think you're, I, I would say you are who you are because yeah, you're born from a mom and a dad and yeah. uh, in, in something, a, a human or a plant <laughs> or an animal and that um, you're a beautiful creation and you will, it's your actions, like, especially us as humans, it's our actions yeah. that are going to determine our life. Yeah. Yep. What we do yep. and who yep. we are. Yeah. And how we, how we manifest in terms of conscious creation, right? Yeah. It's yeah. how you are yeah. consciously creating, how you, what yeah. you're doing. You know, you're not just being Zen and sitting and doing nothing. Nothing is going to happen. I mean. No, you have to, you have to take a little bit of action. <laughs> action, right? You have to take a little bit of action. It's all about action. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. So what, what are you doing? What are you taking action on that you can share with us? What can I share? Um, I know you have I, some top secret stuff, but <laughs> I, I mean, I'm working, I'm working on, on some uh, major work. I have actually two major work in the, in the, in the books, in the fields. Uh, I have, a an offer to make on the 21st, a presentation mm -hmm. that is quite big. And then I'm also working on a, something more global about my my body of work that I'm putting to bringing together in something mm -hmm. that I'm working on for the beginning of the year. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm pretty busy. Yeah, it's awesome. No, I don't like to say busy. I said I want to use the word busy. Yeah, I am, busy is sort of a. It's like. Yeah. Look at me. Look at how busy I am. <laughs> yeah, I am. I, I, what will I? I I found uh, somebody. I heard somebody using a word to say that I have a lot of activities going on. Mm -hmm. or but that i am busy it makes it true like when i use i am i just want to follow it by positive things things that yeah. i want to dwell on so yeah, I, I don't think for me yeah i don't think for me oh sorry go ahead i'm working on exciting things uh -huh. yeah i'm yeah. working on many exciting things yeah 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 i was just gonna say the busy to me, that has kind of a it has kind of a negative connotation mm -hmm. now. It's passive. Um, yeah, it's 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 pa it, Yeah, it's it's sort of a. I, I get it a lot with with uh, guitar students. It's like, well, did you practice this week? No, I was busy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's also an excuse. Yeah, it's also it's also an excuse. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I I think that. The times when I've created the most, I, I've been pretty heavily scheduled, and I think that helps with it because then you have to, rather than if you if you look at a day and there's is completely blank, then you think, well, I've got all the time in the world. But if you say, well, I have an appointment here, I have an appointment here, and I have an appointment here, and have this little section of time, then then you just say, well, I'm going to use that to create what I what I want to create. Yeah, I was hearing that time and energy no time and space are you know the ultimate lux luxury time and space so the ultimate, space in terms the ultimate of, what? Um, space time the, uh -huh. the time you have like is val it's value time is money you know you hear yeah, that yeah, yeah, very yeah, valuable yeah. and also space you know like the bigger the the more luxur luxurious uh -huh. but um mm -hmm. to to put it in you know, to link it to the busyness, um, when we're busy, it's almost like our time is not valuable. You know, we're putting a lot of things in it. Yeah. And we're dragging, you know, things are carrying us along. But I said it's passive because we, um, it's like something we are that is happening to us. Like we're not consciously yes. yeah. leading, yeah. creating. Right. right. So it's about the choices we make. Um, That's right. Right. What, how are we, if, since time is a, a luxury, time is money, am I spending my time doing the thing that I really want to do? Right. Or am I just filling my time with, you know, things? Filling the thing, filling the time with things you should, like we were talking about yesterday. That are shooting you. Should, <laughs> you should, you're shooting all over yourself because... I have all these shoulds I need to be, I, I need to be doing all these shoulds I need to be doing. And so I don't have time for the things I really want to Sometimes do. Sometimes it's numb, yeah. it's not too numb. Um, Gabor Mate, I remember in the, the myth of normal, he's talking about it. Business has become like a, um, a disease, you know, like a, a trend 
we like to say saying I'm busy is like I'm important or yeah, I'm busy, right. you know, but yes. a lot of time it, it's a sign of, 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 of suffering. It's a time of um, we're escaping something. Yeah. Why are we numbing ourselves? You know, why are we running like crazy? Do we have an aim? Where are we running? Where are we going? What are we yeah. Yeah. Are running towards? I mean, it's probably, you know, some of the people listening to us probably will be like, no, we're busy for the right reasons. We have a lot of things to do. And that's probably true. But I think it's it's interesting just to to look at the things that feel like feel in our day and make choices. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm- I've been working purposefully also on that because I used to be, I can still be somebody who has a lot to do, Mm -hmm. but I think twice now before I say yes to something or before I put something, I add something to my calendar. Yeah. 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 And uh, well, like we were talking about in our 50th, when we talked about if it's important to you, you you make time you, for it. You create, yeah. You create the the time. You you mm-hmm. prioritize it. Prioritize it over. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, I think I, I can't speak for you, but I know I do a lot of. What am I going to do now? Mm. What's the right thing to do now? Mm. Is it could my time be better spent doing something else than what I'm doing now? And I'm I'm working on overcoming that as well, and saying, well, you know, whatever I'm doing now is is perfect and i'm going to do it i'm going to like this is the steve hardison thing it's like whatever you're doing right now be the best in the world at it yeah i mean if you have a vision and you're doing purposeful things Mm -hmm. consciously creating something yeah so whatever you're doing first you do you give you you do it and there is a verse that in the bible that i very love you know um whatever you do do it as unto the lord like you do the best you can in everything you do and that's it's on my mantle it's something that i loved i i i I love having just seeing that whatever i do i give it my best because i'm doing you know for the lord um and also um it it's all it's it's the vision my purpose in life yeah. And that's uh, Kerry Conley, another another coach that my wonderful uh, Kabi founder Cynthia had invited us to, you know, an, um, a retreat at her house with this woman who was amazing. She's a coach too, and she had helped us draft our vision for the year. And mm-hmm. she was the way she explained it is that once your your vision, you know, is defined, you have clarity. And the way you do your, you do, you do smart goals. And when you have those goals, everything that goes in your calendar will be very specific because yeah, you right. will know if it goes, whatever doesn't bring you. You know what, it, if it goal, aligns with. what Doesn't your, have, yeah. exactly. Yeah. There, is, there yeah. needs to be an alignment. For me, or, or, yeah. or for example, today, aujourd'hui, I, I was about to say today, I have my kids at home. So. There is a lot that I wanted to work on that I didn't work on. So that's part of my frustration. But it was good since my children are the most important thing for me. Right, yeah. Spending my time with them is one of my goals. So it's important. So it's it's a good way to spend my time, to be spend time with my children. I did some conferences and we went for a walk and things like that. So it's good. Um, and then at four is my time now to do a little work for myself. So I'm, nice. I'm going to go out and do some things. And that time is well spent too, because I have a vision. I know what I'm doing. It's not mm-hmm. just, okay, what I feel like doing. It's yeah. uh, what am I working towards? Yep. Yeah. Being very intentional. Mm-hmm. I, wanted, I wanted to backtrack for just a second, because when you said uh, one of my favorite guys of all time, Johann Sebastian Bach. Oh, <laughs> he every composition he he wrote uh at the end sdg yes. which I, I think it's solo deo only to the glory of god yeah. so every everything he created was just to the glory yeah uh, so that's that's just he i love his story i remember uh reading i told you in our homeschool we would do a composer every trimester mm-hmm. and with Joanne Sebastian back, I remember his story, you know, all the times he spent going to places and being just playing only for, you know, he was doing the org, right? For mm-hmm. the, the big, for the glory of God. And I remember his, I don't, 
remember all the details, but I remember of, um, yeah, his piety and um, just wanting to work for the glory of God, yeah, and giving that heritage. So that yeah, he was he was kind of he was kind of a. I mean, did you know that he walked off of his post as an organist at some church? I oh, forget where in Germany. And he just said, well, I'll see you later. I got it. There's then, this, there's this great he, organist playing like 200 miles away. And so I'm going to walk. And he walked. Yes. <laughs> I remember that in the in his story. Yes. And he left for there. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and I his employer that. was not is, was not pleased about that. But no, you know. no. Yeah, it was. I, I always t told my music appreciation students about him. It must have been rather intimidating. Let's say you were you were in uh, a church service as a member of his Lutheran congregation, and you were in the the orchestra or in the choir. It must have been intimidating to know that Mr. Bach <laughs> could could smoke you on any instrument that you chose to play. He was much yes. better, and he's a much better he's singer than you were too. It's like, mm -hmm. oh my. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah so that's that's Agnes. great yeah he was great i don't remember all the stories but i had little um do i have it here little books on every um that i read for the kids that are were really on um, like all on all the composers on all the com on all the composers yeah. i love that so, yeah that's great i have mozart here hayden paganini yeah. beethoven schubert yeah but the back is not here but it was yeah love it love them the kids love um, all those little stories. And that's yeah. how they, when they think about the composer, you know, they think about the story. Yeah. And there is one that is awesome that has nothing to do with uh, the composer. It's um, on Shakespeare. Um, mm -hmm. No. These little books uh, by Diane Stanley. I don't know if you know her. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wow. So, so is this, this just one, uh, example, has lots of color plates in there for the, like all the art? Yeah, so it's a kind of the biography, but you know, with pictures and with very okay. accessible for children. Nice. That's and uh, like the way I introduced them, Michelangelo, you know, by reading the Diane Stanley, that was amazing. But I wanted to find the the Shakespeare because that one was uh, very very well. Done. Oh yeah, here, actually, the Bird of Avon, the story of Shakespeare, for example. But ah, I love that. Uh, the way the the whole story is written. And with the images and so it just uh i'm coming back to the way to teach children and how they yeah. will love you know we were talking about intrinsic motivation yeah. when you introduce to them like joan of arc you know the story like that with images with beautiful literature and beautiful they are they know it forever it's not just yeah, it, like it, boring it sinks in. something yeah. you know it's just something that they love and yeah, yeah. we do we did um Base our homeschool on that, and that's just fun. All of those books, anyway. Yeah, uh, that's very cool. Well, we gotta let's talk about that because of Bach, because we did the same thing. Yeah, and... yeah. So that... <laughs> anyway, we're we we gotta we gotta wrap it up. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Already, yeah, it goes. I, I was um, I'll just mention this on the air because in Toastmasters uh, yesterday, we we had a discussion about people who are insistent on going over the over. So you get the red light, so you get 30 seconds to wrap it up. And then if you go 30 seconds beyond that, we had a new thing where we put up a red card. So if you're <laughs> over the over, if you're over the over. That's bad, <laughs> That's bad. you're out. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right, everybody, we'll see you uh, we'll see tomorrow. You t um, yeah, tomorrow, yeah. bye-bye. All right. Oh.